So this is a bit of a, an episode from my life that I felt was appropriate for the Slumber Party Massacre. Oh. <laughs> oh. Do tell. Yes, unfortunately so. So I got off at the station near my house and I was walking home um, and I didn't notice. I wasn't paying attention. Um, as a matter of fact, I was listening to a piece of music and I'll tell you what that piece of music was in a moment. It doesn't help the story. That's behind the Patreon paywall. <laughs> <laughs> the, the road, it was a, uh, I was on one side of the road. And the side of the road I was on sloped away. It went off because it's like a, a long bit that goes elsewhere. So it oh, goes yeah. away. So I need to cross the road now to continue my journey. And hadn't noticed, it was now just me and one other person. A young woman. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's my immediate thought. one of two ways. <laughs> yes. Potentially. Which movie and... are you in? <laughs> <laughs> Not the one I want to be in. Because I become very self-conscious, as I always do, that I'm going to make this person uncomfortable. So she's up in front of me. I, you know, slow down. And she's going ahead. I don't want to stop because I feel like that's worse. And somehow mm. I've got it into my head that when the other side of the road does reappear, crossing would also be weird because it would make it me feel like I was trying not to be seen following her. <laughs> Incidentally, throughout this entire story, I have no evidence that she ever fucking notices me. <laughs> Just a spoiler alert. I'm, I have I'm, no evidence. I'm sure she might have. You, you know what would have been uh, an easy thing to do? What's that? Overtake her. Now I'm speeding up <laughs> behind her. Well, yeah, like, but there as soon is a as moment there. <laughs> yeah, once I overtake, it's fine. But what yes. if she sees and she runs, and now I'm just chasing this woman? So well, okay, the option you have there is don't pursue. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't, don't change let direction. Become a race. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, we're doing a bit of a race, are we? <laughs> oh, I'll just, I'll just so just potentially just frighten, uh, frighten a person and allow her to run away. So yeah. like what I'm hoping is, because I know this road well, um, incidentally, the piece of music I was listening to was Closer by Nine Inch Nails, which ah. <laughs> not <laughs> ideal. Closer to you. Is that right? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> Unless that's what happens after he says, I want to F you like an animal. Yeah. Bow, yeah, yeah. bow, bow. Bow, you bring me closer <laughs> to God. Da, 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 to God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah. You, it's God, you know. <laughs> you know, it's all the same. It is when it's you, baby, is what I said to her. So <laughs> I'm worried, but I'm you aware should... that this road has cats on it. And my, my thought is, I really hope that I see a cat and I can stop and pet the cat. That will accomplish two things. One, I won't be following this woman and I have an excuse to just stop dead and just be here for a moment. And two, she'll see if she does look back, then the kind of person who stops for cats and therefore less likely to be a serial killer, I think. No, but Jordan Peterson also stops for cats. That's one of his rules. Shit. And so Damn. she's just going to okay. be like, oh, oh, no, this is a <laughs> psychopath who is <laughs> oh god, <laughs> who believes that we should mate like lobsters. <laughs> oh, no. What happens is I see a cat, but it's not on my side of the road. It's on the oh, other side. For fuck's sake, so Paul. I decide... I decide that's enough. I can stop, turn, and observe the cat, and that's a good enough reason to have stopped walking and allowed this woman to take a lead. No. I look back, and she's gone. I think, great. Although, boy, she sure moves fast, and then I hear a door shut beside me. So she went, she got home, and from her perspective, she arrived home, where, and as she approached her door, the guy who was behind her stopped walking. Yes, staring ominously into a bush that no one, no very, one could... <laughs> very deliberately away from her. Mm. Like, oh my mm. God, she must have called the police immediately. And then I carried on walking and I find a cat on this side of the road. And I just <laughs> say, where the fuck were you? You let me down. I you let me you down, bro. You were there when I needed you most. And then this cat probably attacked you. I grab his face and kiss him on both cheeks. You failed me. <laughs> You're nothing to me now. <laughs> like uh, like Judas in <laughs> in the garden That's of Gethsemane. <laughs> oh, um, I got home and mentioned this um, to a friend, and she was just like, "You probably could have just crossed the road." Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that. Yeah, that was the alternative. That was probably the better alternative. Sometimes I forget that. that you, sometimes I forget that you're British, and then uh, I, hear, <laughs> I hear moments. And then like stories this. make sense. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Dear. Just one of the many unbearable moments that I experience walking down any given street. <laughs> ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da, podcast credits. Hello 
and welcome to One Good Thing, the podcast that drinks too much milk. I'm Paul Devereaux, and I'm joined this week by Ellen Graham from the life of Ellen Graham. Hi! Ellen Graham. Tell us about Ellen Graham. Well, I was voted uh, least likely to be penetrated in high school, so I feel like I would have survived (laughs) this movie no problemo. (laughs) Mean entry for the yearbook. A lot of complaints. Oh, yeah. (laughs) We didn't even have a yearbook, so it's... But it's nobody just... nobody wanted to complain because if they did, they they you know they'd get the prize, they'd be in the picture. <laughs> I mean, I did get a sash, so that that suited oh, me just cool. fine. Um, oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, no, I I'm I'm Ellen Graham. I am a uh, frequent mm. pest and gadfly uh, on this <laughs> podcast, uh, appearing when I ought not to be, and um, <laughs> yeah, uh, sending the podcast into long rambling tangents about. Not, Hooray! Not the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be super focused this time because um, as of last week, I started oh, yeah, trying why? again with my notes. <laughs> oh, good. I have three notes, I think. <laughs> yes, I have very relevant and important things to say. So Ooh. I have asked Ellen to join me so that we might get drilled by Amy Holden Jones's 1982 slasher movie, The Slumber Party Massacre. <laughs> the basketball team is planning a party, a slumber party. The party begins at 8 o'clock. But be on the lookout for an uninvited guest. When the pizza arrives, things really start jumping. Some people may have to leave early. But others will hang around and hang around. But for those who stay, there'll be plenty of surprises. And non-stop action. One thing's for sure, no one's getting any sleep the night of the Slumber Party Massacre. Close your eyes for a second and sleep forever. Here's the story. The movie was written as Sleepless Nights by author and feminist activist Rita May Brown. And she wrote it as a satire of slasher films. Off to a good start. <laughs> Sounds good. The producers rewrite the script against her will to make it a serious slasher. Oh. Uh-oh. I mean, serious. <laughs> you know, as serious as 1982 slashers get. Oh, yes. There is yeah. very much a woman eating a pizza off a corpse in this film. So let's not, <laughs> let's not pretend oh, it's God. too elevated. <laughs> let's not, yeah. <laughs> let's not say this was the Dark Knight of slasher movies. They definitely had some fun here. Oh, God. Yes, the film yes. was, however, quite unique in, ni- in 80s slasher movies in being directed by a female director. We have got Amy Holden Jones, and I really kind of love her story. She's a film editor, principally. She Ooh. loved photography, so she studied art history at Wellesley College in Massachusetts only so that she could mitch off and go to MIT and do their film studies course. <laughs> she could mitch off? Which I guess she couldn't get into. Uh, <laughs> British expression, just to bunk off. Get, get oh, out of okay. there. Yeah. Not go to class. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. <laughs> Uh, she wins first place at a festival uh, where a young Scorsese was judging. So she's struggling to make ends meet. She moves back to Boston and then she decides to wire Scorsese like, hey, remember me? Should I move to New York? And he Whoa. gave her a job as an assistant on Taxi Driver. So it's networking. <laughs> Whoa, that's a bold fucking move. I know, right? Just, hey, Marty Scorsese. I mean, to be fair, Marty Scorsese before, Sc- ta- before Scatsy Driver. Um, <laughs> That was the acapella uh, musical he <laughs> tried to make happen. But Robert De Niro was just not having a bar. <laughs> You're looking at me. Boop, ba, ba, doop, ba. <laughs> it's. <laughs> There's nobody here. Ba, ba. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she works on Taxi Driver and she marries the cinematographer, Michael Chapman, which feels like a thing somehow. Like, you know, oh, he, he slept with a bridesmaid. Marrying. <laughs> cinematography yes just like as an expression or just a cliche thing to do like oh he slept with the bridesmaid and you know she married the cinematographer (laughs) (laughs) just a thing that people do well i guess it's uh, you know part of hollywood nepotism is just trying to create your own working film crew 
So you've whatever... got to start your own dynasty. If you're <laughs> yeah. not in a dynasty, so, start one. <laughs> so whatever you are practicing, if you're a director, well, you probably need to sleep with not another director. You need to get someone. Yeah, at, you sure. know, Sleep with the best. You need boy, a crew. Or you need gaffer, free labor. Or yeah. <laughs> You're, well, that's about to become super relevant because, yes, oh. she gets told by Scorsese, you're too good to be an assistant. So he gets her a job with Roger Corman, which is an interesting move. <laughs> you're too good to be a servant here in heaven. Please Ooh. go and rule hell. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, it's your own dominion, right? Isn't that what Lucifer so. was thinking? Hey, I don't want to be uh, <laughs> serving under anyone else. I'll start my own thing. <laughs> I'll start my own pandemonium. So... There she edits for Joe Dante, Hal Ashby, and Scorsese, but no, none of their like big. Fi- she's not on being there, you know. She's not doing the big things, she's but she's working. On Gremlins. With she's doing the greats. She's doing the stuff they all did with Roger Corman. So <laughs> great, but she doesn't like it. She doesn't oh. like it. She doesn't like the fact that an editor can massively improve a film with their work, but would it will never be their film. It'll be the director's film. Otherwise, we'd be correctly calling it Marsha Lu- Lucas's Star Wars. That's true. Yes, yeah. That's yes. part of the unseen job. Exactly, yeah, and yeah. she doesn't like that. So she steps away from the next film that she was due to be uh, editing uh, and approaches Corman about making her own movie. He says she's not proven herself enough yet, that she needs to do something to show her abilities. So at this stage, she can't write, so she goes digging around in Corman's archive of unused scripts and finds Rita Mae Brown's script, which at this point has been rewritten by the producers and called Don't Open the Door. <laughs> she Great. she read the eight-page prologue, which contained, in her words, the holy trifecta of exploitation storytelling, a dialogue scene, a suspense scene, and an action scene. She's pretty cool. Yeah. So she and her cinematographer husband, and best boy, nephew, whatever, uh, <laughs> some friends and some students at the UCLA shoot the first eight pages onto 35 millimeter film. And I fucking love this so much. She then edits the footage herself on Joe Dante's Moviola film editor after hours whilst he was working on The Howling. Oh my God. So Joe Dante takes The Howling out of the machine and fucking she comes in to put her like Slumber Party Massacre prologue <laughs> together. Yeah. That fills me with joy. She gets nine minutes together of movie, which impresses Corman enough to give her $200,000 to shoot the script. Uh, she doesn't use any of the stuff she filmed because none of the actors were in SAG. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> Got to gotta stick so. with your unions, people. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. romance here, but there's there's also hard union rules that you have to follow. <laughs> Don't you dare pick up a chair <laughs> if it's not your job. <laughs> absolutely so now yeah she's she's off she's directing this movie and oh that movie that she turned down the editing of was uh et oh but who who's heard of that you know um... <laughs> where's that now <laughs> where's that franchise <laughs> this movie has so many sequels et's got yeah. none so <laughs> yeah exactly i've seen quite a few of these sequels actually and i've not seen a single et sequel no. so stick it up your ass spielberg <laughs> eet extra extraterrestrial <laughs> now unfortunately the story gets a little sad after slumber party because oh, she convinces what? corman a woman in hollywood having a sad story <laughs> i know right hey we let one have it Catherine bigelow's fine now we let one everyone else <laughs> no she's not fine she had to be married to james cameron and that <laughs> sounds like the worst that was not the end of her story <laughs> she fucking made point break the best movie ever made and her bitter ass husband poured all of his money into trying to remake it as avatar <laughs> but without any of the raw sexual charisma exactly he tried to cast um oh god what's her name what N- N- natiri uh, uh, uh oh fuck Gamora. i'm trying to picture her fuck. face and i can't picture fuck. it the right color <laughs> <laughs> is she blue is she green zoe saldana there she thank is thank you jesus yes he tried to make her his um patrick swayze but uh, she's yeah. great but you know <laughs> you can't make anyone, anyone swayze. swayze you can't make anyone swayze they're only born that way that's true and and uh, but... just when we needed swayze the most he vanished i know right <laughs> <laughs> but jones jones convinced corman to let her write and direct a jamie lee curtis romance movie called love letters which is very sweet it's about her it's similar to her actual life writing love letters to her husband who is far away so it's Aww. very sweet but she writes her passion, a romantic comedy drama film that she wants to direct next. But 
Samuel Goldwyn Jr., who I in my head is the lion from Metro Goldwyn Mayor. Great. In a suit. <laughs> Samuel <laughs> Goldwyn Jr. options it and holds on to it, not allowing her to direct it. Oh. She directs she's trying to raise the money to like challenge this, and she directs, directs a comedy version of Cinderella called Made to Order, Made M A I D. Huh. But things are not opening up and she's seeing she's seeing her apprentice editors go and find work as directors because they're men. So like mm. you know, just training up these people in their craft and then they go and get more career opportunities than she does. Finally, Goldwyn Jr. made her movie, but with a male director. She's still credited as screenwriter. The movie was called Mystic Pizza and it did very oh, well. Oh, oh, shoot, yeah. yeah. Dang. Yeah. Absolutely. It does so well that Jones does get offers, but not to direct, because women don't direct. <laughs> but Hollywood is just about willing to tolerate women writing and always has been for some reason. Like Lee Brackett back in the 50s. For some reason, that was always fine. I think, again, it's because it's like an unseen... Yeah, it's something they can do in the kitchen. Exactly, because at the end of the day, the person who's going to get the most... Uh, yeah. you know, that, that people are going to attribute to the making of the film is just always going to be the director. No, never mind yeah. that film is a collaborative process and needs to be <laughs> written, edited and Look, d- performed. Look, Auteur theory is perfectly fine and it doesn't disadvantage anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Says the man who wrote two essays on David Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Who is his editor? I don't know. And I wrote two essays on David Lynch. I don't think his editor uh. is a human. I think he... No, <laughs> I think he's, he. I think he hangs up. I think he hangs up his film from a washing line, and um, <laughs> lets nature do its work. Yeah, in the morning there's a the film. The strong canister. scenes will survive. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! So she becomes a screenwriter, and she writes, and this is kind of amazing. Beethoven, the dog movie. Yes. <laughs> she writes indecent proposal. Uh, the remake of The Getaway, the remake of the Sam Peckinpah movie, and The Relic, the horror movie in the late 90s. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Finally, in 2018, she co-creates a TV medical drama show called The Resident, uh, which now has 107 episodes, and she's a co-host on an American show called The View Online, which I think is like a discussion kind of fella. So, and she seems pretty cool on Twitter. So, who's laughing <laughs> now, patriarchy? <laughs> Don't worry, women. You too can be popular on Twitter <laughs> while it lasts. All you have to do is work at this for 30 years. Yeah, and let all your uh, male colleagues get ahead in front of you. You get the, oh, the kudos God. you deserve. Blah, blah, blah. It's 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't think about that. No. Bad <laughs> um, Back to format. Critics were snobs. Like, you know, only the best people are. Um, it received mixed reviews. You little prick. <laughs> <laughs> Janet Maslin, legendary film critic for the New York Times, said, The Slumber Party Massacre is just the usual cavalcade of corpses, all of them dispatched by a maniac who wields a power drill. At the end of the movie, a woman who has miraculously survived the carnage breaks the drill in half. That's feminism for you, and symbolism too. Sick of your shit, Janet Maslin there. <laughs> Yeah, I go around breaking my fair share of penises, but no one ever claps me on the back. No <laughs> yeah, one... exactly. You're not into symbolism. You're actually out there snipping off penises. <laughs> Someone's got to do the work, all right? <laughs> so I was going to uh... put the legwork in here. Are we serious <laughs> about this? So I'm seeing a lot of placards. I'm not <laughs> seeing a lot of severed dicks. Yeah, come on. Praxis, people. <laughs> you pra- put your feminist praxis. Makes feminist praxis. <laughs> praxis does make perfect. <laughs> Uh, but, conversely, Leonard Clady over at the LA Times, so it's a rival Times here, New York oh, versus on. LA. T- tips my hat, McClady. <laughs> McClady. <laughs> As you were. <laughs> As- <laughs> he recalls a darkly humorous vision and a breathtaking pace. So, yeah, there you go. Take that fucking New York. New Yorkers hated it, LA loved it. That makes sense in my head. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Uh, mainly by the uh, the amount of T and A in this film. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the West Coast gets laid, right? Like, East Coast drinks tea, West Coast fucks. <laughs> 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 I say based on nothing. I don't know where Cinematic America Cinematic impression. Is. Like, <laughs> oh, that's true. I no, forgot. Like, I know I where had... America is, but like when people talk to me about, you know, all the different states and the fact that like, different states have such different time zones i'm like why 
<laughs> it's just all I know is one side has California and the other has Maine. <laughs> so you got Stephen King or David Duchovny. <laughs> Pick one. Which one's getting laid? <laughs> I feel like it's Maine, but it shouldn't be. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, public, meanwhile, felt that it was the size of the mouth that mattered, not what you put in it. But it wasn't the size of the mouth that mattered, but what you put in it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I've, I've been Dialogue doing that wrong my whole superb. life. <laughs> Which powerful woman wrote that line? You decide. <laughs> was it the director or the writer? Oh, God. Or it might have been improvised on set. You never know. Mm, um, truly. Akshat Mahajan on Google said, I didn't expect it to be so good. I thought it will be having nudity and some kills, but it was opposite. <laughs> opposite? <laughs> so people had life put in front of them and lots of people put on clothes. Yeah, I, definitely. No, there was nudity and, and, and murder. Yeah. So um, you would think He qualified correct. some kills. So maybe it was opposite. It was some nudity and kills. I don't know. But I will tell yeah. you, mate, Grammarly is free. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Let's get it. Let's get it on. Akshat Mahajan. Ah, uh, Slumber Party Ma- God bless you. Slumber Party Massacre has 45% on Rotten Tomatoes, 5.6 on IMDb, and 80% on Google. I'm glad to be back on sure footing with Google, where they love <laughs> literally everything. It apparently made $3.6 million on its $200,000 budget. Not enough to challenge systemic misogyny, though. So, Ellen, you Ross Fawn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can, uh, can't you can't you get out of the third grade? <laughs> Sometimes I have reoccurring dreams that no I can't and uh it actually oh, no. haunts me. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh yeah, this, and unlike uh a lot of cinema greats, this one I've actually seen. <laughs> Ooh. And, not, and not just for the podcast. I've seen this before. So uh Oh amazing. Yeah, I feel like I I've <laughs> I done have not. my homework early. <laughs> Love it. Because the reason I kind of wanted to do this is that me and some friends from my film class went to a movie marathon, a mystery movie marathon of cult movies. And they were fun. They were a really good bunch. But at the end of it, we all agreed that this was definitely programmed by a white guy in his 30s. <laughs> Something you would know nothing about. Uh, but <laughs> but that's why, Sorry. right? That's why I want to try and expand my horizons and look into cult and exploitation cinema that came from different people. Mm. But it's going to be hard, I think. Having read the backstory of this movie, I now appreciate there's a reason there's not many of these movies directed by women. It's because the system sucked. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I. So the way I saw this is um, mm. I met a bunch of kind of filmmakers and creatives in South Australia. Um, mm. we, we made a horror movie together. And uh, this group regularly has like a movie night almost every week or every fortnight, whatever. Oh, it's a shite night. Shite night, yeah. Um, yeah, <clears throat> where uh, uh, the host always puts on uh, picks like two schlocky um, horror <laughs> films, um, and then the the weirder the better, the um, the harder to find the better. That's where we watch things as well. That's where I saw things oh for the God. first time. Um, <laughs> and look, I enjoy it because I do enjoy the schlock. I enjoy the creativity of that time period. It's got a real kind of DIY ethos to it. But there is also just a part of me that's like, there is, sure, there's a there's an ironic fun to be like, oh, yeah, look how much TNA they get out in this film, in, yeah. in these films. But I'm also like, no, that's just, that's just, that's just objectification. Like, you know, we can be ironic yeah. about it all the time, but that's what it is. And it's also systemic yeah. of... You know, I love the fact that these a lot of these films are made on a shoestring. That the mm. the creativity of it is what we really love to see. You know, how can yes. you make gore happen when all you've got is uh, uh, <laughs> like a ziploc bag full of fake blood, yeah, uh, and some play doh? <laughs> Go, yeah, um, but <laughs> just a dream. Yeah, yeah. You when you when you have people who dare to dream, but also <laughs> what that means is a lot of these actors are unknowns. They are. They have very little power. Mm. Definitely, probably not union actors. Um, yeah. And yes. it's really easy to let yourself be exploited for the sake of the genre. Yes. Well, you know, not every movie, not every horror movie, needs to have TNA. And so, yeah, it's no. a really interesting perversion of when I first saw Slumber Party Massacre because 
it does just play like a traditional schlock. It does, but that's right? really interesting. But there is this sense of, it feels slightly, a lot of these schlocky films do have tongue-in-cheek sense of humour about themselves. Mm. And so it's just like, yeah. uh, is it just that or is there something more? And then, yeah, again, I, I think that night when we were watching it, we were talking a little bit about the history and I'm like, that's really interesting and it's also really sad yeah. because this is not yes. coming off as any more of a parody than any other film um you know well, even it's, yeah it's interesting we'll, we'll talk about this and we'll let's have a look talk at about it shall we let's just talk about it folks because there's a lot going on but first i think we gotta run through what happens in this here movie oh put on your little jogging shorts and let's rip through it <laughs> oh christ let's try our best so <laughs> There's an, es- there's an escaped lunatic about, and I'm guessing he broke into the main girl's bedroom and decorated it, because fuck. <laughs> What's wrong? What's wrong with the... <laughs> you got some floral it's, print? You got something against floral, floral print? It's floral print, bright right? pink, f- bright pink fluffy f- carpet. It's... Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I see, I see Ellen's bedroom behind her. Uh, I mean, it's perfectly normal. That's what it is. everywhere, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Not designed by a psychopath at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we meet Main Girl, whose parents are leaving. Um, leaving her alone with Creepy Ted, her neighbour, keeping a watchful eye. So, <laughs> it kind of looks like... I'm um, sure it'll be fine. Paul Hogan a little bit. <laughs> Paul Hogan. Okay, yeah. yeah. Paul Hogan. This guy looks name, really Australian for no reason. I get, maybe, that's, <laughs> maybe Californians and Australians looked similar at a time. Maybe. Maybe Probably that's where the Nexus... because of their reluctance the to meat. wear sunscreen. Yeah, anyway. that'll be it. Anyway. <laughs> well, she speaking of reluctance, she throws out her beloved Barbie doll because she must leave childish things behind her. But fortunately, it finds a new owner pretty fast by a creepy hand that comes in and takes it. <laughs> it's never hard to get rid of a Barbie. Oxfam. What do you think the world population of Barbies is now? I hear uh, they make a hundred a minute. What? A minute? Yeah. Oh a my minute. God. Jesus. Jesus. This, they've been making them for 60 years. All right. Well, probably not 100 a minute for 60 years, but it's got to be a lot of fucking Barbies out there. Everyone, we got to think about repurposing Barbies. So if you stick enough <laughs> together, maybe that can be your new bed frame. Maybe we can finally afford houses, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a house, the Barbie Dream House. <laughs> I'll never. That's what I call it. <laughs> Every time um. I open my door, I'm pressing tiny plastic boobs. So <laughs> come in, ladies. <laughs> I hate every part of being in your home. <laughs> Not least because you're in it. <laughs> but it is a factor. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we meet two young men, Paul Reiser and Michael Keaton. <laughs> and they hassle a lady for her last few earthly moments. Hi. Uh, my name's uh, Jeff. Can I help you with that? Sure. Thanks. <laughs> you know, I've been having some ringing in my um, ear. I mean, in my phone. And I thought maybe a phone woman could help me. Uh, are all phone women this pretty? <laughs> I wouldn't know. Would you ever consider dating a younger man? I mean, you know what they say about younger men. Try it. You'll like it. I hadn't really thought about it. Well, my number's out of board. Your number is zero. <gasps> uh, because, yeah, we see an electronic, an electronic woman. A um, electrician lady. And by that, you uh, mean okay. a sparky. <laughs> Someone who works at electrics. Not This isn't a bionic oh, really? woman thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's a sparky in Australia. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's such that's that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, you gotta call, call electricians sparkies. It's part of the flavor. I'd have thought it'd be sparkos. <laughs> no, that's something completely different and very offensive oh god. to me. So. Oh shit. Okay, let's, moving swiftly on. She, she just gets murdered in a van. It's fine. Okay. And then we Ooh. experience a very unsupported game of basketball. <laughs> uh, you mean the lack of bras? Yes. Yep, okay. <laughs> the noticeable lack of bras. Great. So noticeable and such that I watched this with my family and my mother commented on, oh, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good heavens. Oh, I say. Oh, perhaps they burn them all. They're all feminists. Mm, and um, truly. then, yes, there's a shower sequence that's more full on than most stuff of the period. Is this the female gaze? I mean, it's a good instruction that you need to really soap up and get in your butt. you got to get up your butt, folks. And I feel like not that's doing a lesson it, that... A lot of people haven't learned. So this is a public health announcement, and it needs to be seen by all everyone. Like it, it it's going really well because I was like, oh wow, one of those actors is really getting in there, um, which is great. <laughs> no, it's, it's awesome. Um, people need to 
wash their butts, but um, then they just continue to pass the soap in between themselves, and I'm like, oh, oh, God. oh uh, no, uh, oh no, that's the not 80s. sanitary at all. <laughs> Well, look, with dawning horror, I realise I'm going to have to try and come up with nicknames for these four blonde, large-haired women. Look, what do you have against Valerie anyway? Nothing. She drinks too much milk. Wouldn't happen to have anything to do with how good a basketball player she is, would it? Or how pretty she is. She works at it. Do you ever notice how perfect her eyeliner is? Just so. No reason to be unkind. I don't like people I have to get to know. Can I borrow your dress? Hey, it's her problem she transferred here, not mine. <sighs> Diane, you're a snob. Hey, only the best people are, you know? We have uh, main girl, great. new girl, mm-hmm. mean girl, mm-hmm. tall girl, and Ooh. clumsy girl. <laughs> I think. I'm a little worried about Mean Girl and Main Girl sounding similar to each other in case I have to communicate one of them to you over a bad radio behind enemy lines. Great. Yeah. Why don't you just call one bitch? <laughs> bitch girl. Well, bitch yeah. Girl. <laughs> bitch girl. <laughs> well, Main Girl decides to invite New Girl to the eponymous slumby, par- slumby party. Slumby party. <laughs> Will you come to my slumby party? <laughs> you want to come? God. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. Somehow she turns that off We're going to do hard dwuggy wuggies. <laughs> Slumbies. Slumbies, ladies. <laughs> it's but... Slumbies time. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. One of them forgets her books inside of the school and goes back for it. And oh shit, my system has already failed because I don't know who the fuck that is. She looks like Jennifer Connelly and uh... she gets killed. She gets killed by being drilled for a door. I feel like her actual, like the actual character's name is Linda, but I know that doesn't help you okay. guys at all. It doesn't help me in my madness. <laughs> at this stage, I should have just tried to learn the names. Yeah. But uh, oh, and then well. there's another girl who stops at the side of the road, and oh fuck, who's that? I think it's Main Girl. She has a moment with her boyfriend, who looks like a cross between Biff from Back to the Future and Mick Hucknall. Uh, so Biff, yep. yeah, Biff Hucknall goes off, and then she heads home, where some lady is drilling a, a hole in her door. Yeah, no, no PPE, no goggles, no nothing. No <laughs> also warning. doesn't install a peephole. She just says, "I'm going to drill a hole in your wall." There you go. You got a new peephole. That's Bye. not a peephole. You're going to put <laughs> you're my you're door. Gonna, you're going to put shit in it. <laughs> and also, <laughs> what kind of what kind of tradie? Uh, that's some more Aussie slang. Oh, for I love it. I've a heard tra- tradie before person, because they yeah. f- they frequently ruin Goodman's life. So. <laughs> yeah, but what kind of tradie? Like is able to enter the property without the person being home. <laughs> what kind of trade he can't? Not the oh, one I'd hire. That's the bloody, first test. Bloody PC culture, mate. Can't even <laughs> break into someone's house to do some, you know, repairs dr- and maintenance. Dr- <laughs> even after you've explained you were just putting in a peephole. They, somehow that makes it worse. Even though they didn't ask uh. for one. <laughs> oh, but oh, fuck. There's creepy Ted. So that means this is main character. Shit. I can't. <laughs> I can't even with any of this. So, uh, and then the first one or the third one is grating cheese onto a tortilla and thoughtlessly disturbs a cat who is very busy being trapped in a closet. She yeah. apologizes to the cat, but that cat had no means of getting out of there. To be fair, cats get themselves into stupid situations all the time. That's true. <laughs> now, at this stage, the girls do get together, and I hope it'll be less important for me to be able to identify any one of them at any given time. But yeah, I reckon. One looks like Bridget Fonda. Yep. Another looks like Shirley from Community, uh, and the other is main girl, Sarah Connor. Shirley? So, uh, I'm going to call her Pizza Girl. Pizza, oh yes, Pizza Girl is, a, is yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so, yes, we've got Pizza Girl. Across the street, they're having the slumber party. They're yeah. having the eponymous party. They are. Across the street is new girl and her sister, Sister. Yep, that's fine. Somewhere yep. outside <laughs> is Keaton and Riser. <laughs> and Biff and Biff and Biff Hucknell is driving around somewhere. So I think that's everyone. Uh, oh, we also see a coach uh, earlier. Yes, the, we have coach uh, on the, the phone in the who braless, will show up in the braless uh, a basketball game. Yes, and she will be on later to massively confuse me. Yeah. So because she also looks like one of the students is the problem. Yeah, everyone's roughly then, the same age, which is hard. yeah, <laughs> which is difficult. So Sarah Connor is mixing Kool Aid. Uh, in the kitchen and oh fuck me that's actually new girl i still haven't got it straight 
Oh God! <laughs> no, no, no! That's that's main girl. Main girl's making Kool Aid because it? it's her party. Okay. Yeah. Oh so yes, that's right. It's she her comes party. Out okay, fine. She's making Kool Aid. Yeah. And, All right. And big sis and little sis are they're in a different house. They they weren't involved. Good. Yeah. That's straight. Everything's fine. Cool. Oh, and there's a knock at the window. That's going to be those guys who have come to spy. Who the fuck is that? Who's this extra woman who is at the window? I think that might be Mean Girl. Oh uh, no! So presumably. Uh, yeah, look, I've, I've got a different naming convention. Uh, <laughs> please, uh, please. It's, it's, uh, I don't know, girlfriend. Let's just call girlfriend. her girlfriend. Cause yeah. Yeah. Okay. She's the one who later on, she's the one with the Mick Hucknell, yeah, <laughs> the Biff, Biff Hucknell boyfriend. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, one stage we cut to a, a two women with a cat and I think, okay, that's the girl and sister because the cat, and I swear to God, that's a different cat. And I think the movie's deliberately fucking with me. Yeah, I think it went from grey to, to ginger. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's like, fuck you, movie. <laughs> Glad that wasn't so, just me. <laughs> the guys show up at the girl's house and spy on them doing what all girls do, changing into skimpier clothes. Oh, absolutely. I get my tits out <laughs> in front of my friends all the time. <laughs> it's like, it's blasé at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> Braze, oh. what you mean? Whoa, whoa. Oh my god, look what happened there. Walked right into it, folks. Sure did. And that's sexual. Like harassment. a slumber party, Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be walking right into my tits. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> They're not as um, cushiony as some of these actresses. <laughs> Where's the guy seeing her anyway? He's beautiful. I think she has a big mouth. Hey, it's not how big your mouth is, it's what's in it that counts. What I don't see is what she sees in John Minor. Maybe what we don't see. <laughs> hey, it's not how big it is, remember. It's what's, what's in it that counts. counts. L- luckily, it looks like the girl, I don't know who the fuck it is at the window, boy, girlfriend, girlfriend is uh, about to get killed. Uh, yep. But it's just Ted skulking around outside and he dies instead. Damn it, I could really do a thinning out some of these numbers. Yes, thank goodness we've got one down. <laughs> we've got one down. A creepy death totem made out of that Barbie doll is uh, nailed to the wall outside. Oh, it must be the boys. Really? That's not charming. <laughs> if you think that's who they are. To They're just fair, flirting, guys. To be fair, men aren't. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. To be fair. There's, I've only seen one charming uh, man in a horror film. And uh, that was Bill Skarsgård in oh, yeah. <laughs> Barbarian. <laughs> And that's it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, well, best go investigate in the dark, I suppose. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> feel like these girls are working with me on this. It's like, we know there's too many of us. Yeah, don't worry. Let's split up and go <laughs> walk around in the darkness. Some of us only agreed to a day shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't go anywhere, so they eavesdrop on um, who the fuck is that I've called her, but it's, it's girlfriend. Uh, she's having a sexy phone call with her boyfriend, and then the lights go out, so it's time to check the creepy garage on their own. What? There's no problem we can't solve by splitting up. Uh, they find the guys who killed the power, apparently, because they got bored of see- eavesdropping. So they just pulled yeah. out some of the fuses. Yeah, they pulled them out. Yeah. Uh, women can't take a joke. Uh, all we did was break <laughs> we into want- your property and, and you know, forcibly Cut the lights. Take, yeah, take out your fuses. Well. <laughs> Uh, um, at this stage, I have my notes are unrefined. I didn't get a chance to read over them, so I've just noted everything down in the hopes it's important. I think I probably could have guessed that New Girl and her sister jostling about wasn't going to be that important in the greatest scheme of things. But no. <laughs> wrote it down anyway. Mean Girl goes to make out with Biff, uh, but he gets rebiffed. Um, oh. That's not bad. Uh, his head <laughs> drops off, and she gets drilled. Yeah, but in a death way, not in a sexy way. Oh, yeah. Not in a sex way. <laughs> yeah, drill, drilled to death by the psycho. <laughs> the remaining girls are hanging out with their two stalkers. It's all good stuff. And the pizza's here, but I asked for extra eyes, and they've given me none. <laughs> but at least you don't have to pay. Yeah. If, you're, if your ah, delivery driver shows up sweet. with no eyes, then the pizza's free. With one eye or less. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's when uh, yes. the, the 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 movie cracks on. Yes. Pizza yes, at this stage we, we pick up the piece a bit, a pace a bit, because New Girl <laughs> is worried about all the screaming and honking and drilling she can hear. So she calls, again, I say, who's that? But it is Coach, yeah. uh, who tells her to just relax. It's fine. Probably fine. You know, people scream and honk all the time, especially <laughs> in an idyllic drilling. suburban setting. It's the uh, It's the malaise of modern american <laughs> suburbia that gets really exposed here the as well as american boobs dream. <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Uh, Keaton has a great idea to keep them all safe. They're just going to shut the curtains, lock the doors, and turn off all the lights. I think we should turn off a lot of the lights, close the curtains that aren't already closed, and make sure all the doors are locked. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can't see the killer, the killer can't see you. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Also, the vision is based on movement. So always remember this, everyone. <laughs> oh, shit. This podcast is also a safety advice thing. Yeah. I forgot you're more likely to get killed by a velociraptor than you are a <laughs> drill-wielding <laughs> psychopath. <laughs> Just statistics bear that out. <laughs> uh. So the men have a, also another great plan to actually not do that and just run yep, instead let's split and see up. if they can get help. Let's yeah. open the doors uh, and okay. run away to somewhere. Maybe we should make a run for it. Valerie Bates lives next door. What if we don't make it? Maybe we should split up. One of us will make it even if the other one doesn't. You know, fuck staying safe. There's much of bullshit to be done. One of them has a knife but mentions that he wishes he hadn't dropped out of Boy Scouts so he would know how to use it. What are Boy Scouts teaching you? Uh, you know, <laughs> what, Is that a flavor? what okay. you need to know. <laughs> They're teaching that you to, to not survive, get got? mate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. So, New Girl doesn't hear the very loud knocking on the door from the desperate man. And so he gets mu- he gets murder phoned, I've put. I don't know what that means. Murder phoned. I'll do. Hey. Doesn't he get killed. murdered with a phone. He just gets murdered. No, he? he just gets killed. He yeah. just gets straight murdered. The murder's, mm. yeah, Boring. relatively straightforward. He's got a drill. Yeah. He's got a very good drill. And he's <laughs> well, very I would say that's it. not straight. I would say that's curly. <laughs> yeah. he's, they get he killed. Gets curly Helix, murdered. Helixy. Yeah. <laughs> curly murdered. Um, we have a. Oh, we do have a glimpse of OGT's second consecutive spacious American body trunk as we see that some of his kills have been stuffed oh, into God, one of their yeah, massive there's... boots. Yeah, he can fit four dead bodies in but he's got to drag beating the other michael ones. kane's too yeah last week <laughs> but he's gonna drag the other one somewhere else <laughs> oh god he'll find a place so we're down to um oh what did we main call girl, her pizza girl pizza girl pizza girl main uh, girl and bridget fonda bridget fonda and uh, the sisters are still alive yes still new girl play. and sister are still across the way yep. i think that's it but there is also at this stage telephone person somewhere that's to coach she's on her way but yes. she gets killed so it's fine she gets killed immediately, so <laughs> she causes just enough disruption in order to also get Pizza Girl killed. Uh, yeah, I think Pizza Girl just gets killed. I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, she leaves. She splits up because what's her name's outside saying, "Hey, hello, mm. hello," and then that leads her to like run off and be like, "We're saved," yes. and they're like, "No," and then I, she gets killed. I thought that was just new. Go- uh, uh, oh my god! Oh, fuck. fuck. <laughs> I thought that was the big sister, but anyway. I think it is new girl. Yeah, doesn't shit. matter. After having a delicious slice of pizza uh, <laughs> that she grabs from the dead hands of the pizza guy and puts and the box the on box. his body and eats it. Is the pizza? Oh, well, life goes on after all. And eating makes me feel best. And I feel bad. And boy, do I feel bad. Oh, I feel better already. Really, I do. I know who I look up to. And, and who I want to style I know my who my actions. avatar is. Yeah, <laughs> I know who I'd be in this film. <laughs> I mean, immediately, I didn't even think twice about it. I just, when they started saying, I'm so hungry, I'm like, oh, did, has he got the pizza on him? I know. <laughs> like, that just seemed like the answer. Like, yeah, exactly. Well, you can't like... survive if you're hungry. <laughs> that... You can't survive if you're dead. Yeah, That's exactly. the first rule. <laughs> okay, yeah, she didn't She didn't follow that one, so she opens the door thinking she's going to be yeah. saved and uh, yeah, drill to the throat. Uh oh. She gets a, yep. Drill to the throat. <laughs> What's the fucking... But there's oh, one less song, girl to remember for us, so... Yes, yeah. we're Why? so low now. It's great. <laughs> uh, the, killer, the killer sneaks up on the lack of peripheral vision lasses, uh, as I shall call them. Um, who is, it's yeah. because of those bangs. It's because of the big hair. Damn it. They've got, no, they've got nothing. <laughs> They're practically Bungle. wearing helmets. <laughs> they are. They try to run for a wall, but it doesn't work, so he gets Bridget Fonda. <laughs> To be fair, it's a barricaded door, but it does just look like they ran into, they ran forward, encountered a wall, and were like, "Oh no!" and then turned. And then... I mean, if you were Ryan Gosling in Blade Runner twenty forty nine, you would just run through that wall. <laughs> <laughs> if big if, I will say. <laughs> Next time you encounter a life problem, just try thinking: Have I hey. tried running through a wall, a la Ryan Gosling? <laughs> What would Ryan Gosling in Blade Runner 2049 do? It's a very long bracelet, but it's good. 
it's very good. <laughs> so New Girl is having a riveting slow wander around the house. And after a little hint of what the parody might have been, um, having you know, involving a gag with the fridge. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Dead body yeah. in the fridge. They Keep find cool. Fonda's body and decide to run. So. Yeah. We got sis two sisters and main girl running about the house. All yes. Piggly, the killer like. decides. Killer decides it's time for a lie down. Oh, here we go. This is where Coach shows up. That's right. Yeah. Coach shows up. Um, yeah, New Girl was able to call somehow. And New Girl gets an angle grinder. That's right. Yeah, she goes downstairs and gets oh, an angle grinder. Oh, New Girl grinder, is but... fucking about in the shed. <laughs> <laughs> she, she has an angle grinder, but she forgets that electricity is important. Yeah, it happens to the best and... of us, right? Even yeah. though there's so Look, many I tools don't... on the shed wall. Um, Nowadays, that thing would have a fucking battery pack in it, and it would work for at least long enough to kill three killers before <laughs> you have to plug it back in. <laughs> Black yeah. and Decker have improved a lot, guys. Meanwhile, Coach has only got a fire poker, which is clearly made yes. out of rubber. <laughs> yes, so she's not going to do very well. She's got a rubber fire poker. Main girl goes in f- yeah. with her knife for a one stab, but it yeah. doesn't work. I feel bad for the coach, though. How was she to know that this house keeps fire pokers that are made out of rubber? <laughs> <laughs> I can't but. If only the father hadn't been quite so committed to physical comedy. <laughs> uh, so the coach gets got at this stage. So the new girl gets him with a machete. Um, they, I think, what do they do? They manage to cut him up a bit and she toss him into a She chases pool. him outside. He's near the pool. Yeah, she just manages to get him with the machete, I think, once. And then he falls backwards yeah. into the pool. But then, yep. bleh, someone. Yeah, they have a nice, yeah. they have a nice hug a thon because they think, ah, oh, finally it's all over. But it's no time for that. He comes out of the pool. Yeah. And the three remaining girls have a bloody good go at him, sure and do. finally manage to get him impaled. Yes, with and the 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 knife. No, it is the still the machete. Yeah, he he takes a running leap at the girl with the machete, <laughs> who is holding it out. Shoots his shot. <laughs> he really does shoot his shot. Ah. Uh. <laughs> And that doesn't work out great for him. And luckily, somebody called the police, and it's the end. Yeah. Old school horror movies really didn't fuck around with a denouement, did they? <laughs> no, I love it. It's like a hammer horror movie. It's like, well, the bad guy's dead. The end. Yeah, credits roll. <laughs> and we are there. So, what did you make of Slumber Party Massacre? Yeah, look, from the first watching, I yeah, I thought, oh, this is a pretty decent slasher in the sense that I like slashers where, like, the the main kind of victims are, are somewhat funny or somewhat um, embodied in different mm. ways. Uh, I really liked the back and forth with the two sisters, even though... Yes. It's very confusing that they're clearly, like, the actresses are clearly the same age-ish, but one yes. is coded much, much younger. But I, I did yeah. like their back and forth. I liked yes, a much lot of, younger. Yeah, I liked a lot of the back and forths with a lot of the women. Um, I thought yeah, there were some funny asides. None of them were really portrayed as, I think you, you talk about, you definitely bemoan this, as do I, uh, a lot in uh. OGT, so I won't bang on about mm. it. But, you know, there was this trend with certain horror movies to really just like want to off the yeah. the characters and while that like is a staple in schlock i feel like mm. it's it's it, it's less about the cruelty because everyone's just made out of putty you know <laughs> it's it's yeah, it's exactly. always usually more about the creativity or more about the tongue in cheekness um yeah, and, and that you there's... want them to be good kids because you want to relate to them and not want to see them get killed because yeah. you're meant to be projecting yourself into their role. Yeah, or even if you do want to get them killed, as is the genre, y- you still yeah. want to give them a chance to endear themselves to you a little bit. To, yeah, to... exactly. Yeah, it's almost as if like you know you want to give each of the actors just like a little shining moment before they're bumped yeah. off. Um, yeah. So like it runs as a pretty, pretty traditional slasher. Um, it takes us a long fucking, even though murders are happening, it takes <laughs> such a long yeah. goddamn time for us to get well, true, it but it is into the meat. Also, of it. a really bite-sized fella. It's an hour and twenty minutes. 
And it does, once it gets going, the pace is pretty good. It does, There are a few yeah. long, boring walk around the house, which is the bane of every horror, because it, getting suspense right is really difficult yes. in a slasher movie. You know, the kills are great fun. You know, you could do that. But you want getting people actually nervous about a character's well-being is a, t- is a big ask. It's a tall order. And it's, yeah, not easily done. Yeah. Um, and the movie struggles with that a bit. But I agree with you that I did like the characters more than I expected to. Mm. And there were and some it- really interesting things with your um, standard obligatory TNA stuff. Because <laughs> if you take the shower sequence... It's really weird <laughs> Oh, because yeah. the women enter the shower. We've got a tracking shot that moves from one woman to the next, as tracks down to her soap. butt. <laughs> as they pass the soap, track down to her butt. The women are just talking about random stuff, you know, things in their life. Sport, maybe. And then it feels so, what's the word? Um, Gratuitous? <laughs> Unnecessary? Yeah, but like overt, <laughs> overtly gratuitous and unnecessary yeah. to the point where it almost felt like it was calling me out. <laughs> it's like, eh, this is what you want. Here it is. Just yeah. right there. You know, it wasn't romanticized at all. They were just cleaning themselves and talking as like friends. And it was interesting. Different. Hey, Linda. Yeah. Do you like watching basketball on TV? Yeah, I love all those great big guys in their cute little shorts. How about you? Yeah, I do. But I love football. How come? Brian Sipes, he's a dog. Yeah, I know what you mean. God, I wish he took his helmet off more often. <laughs> Yeah, because as well, a lot of the the dialogue, like these girls are clearly really into sports. Like that's a running yes. thing throughout the, uh, even the this, this slumber party, I'm fairly sure they were meant to be watching a game yeah, yeah. because uh, that's great. when the coach comes in to check on them, she she like is calling out who's currently um, in the running. Or I can't remember what sport that they're meant to be watching, but like it's just yeah. interesting that that's a kind of, a through line that you wouldn't necessarily if you're having a female-led film i think you would be yeah. uh the, the bias could go oh women aren't interested in sports and blah blah, blah. yeah they would talk about boys yeah but these these characters seem to have like a bit of life to them yeah, but it's at internal... odds with how this film is shot uh, and you do well, say like the the yeah. calling out or the gratuitous of the the tna but at a mm. s- at the same point it is TNA, and it's not it that different from other examples of TNA in the genre. No, but it feels more overt. Like, if you look at the Friday the 13th franchise, often it's very brief, like, because they're trying to get around the censors as well, which I'm surprised this managed to do. <laughs> you know, often it'll just be someone whips off a top in a long shot and then jumps straight into the water, and mm. then you get that classic shot of just sort of just above the chest in the water, so yeah. you can't tell that they're actually wearing pasties. Yes. Um Maybe I've been watching too many of the the B movies then that uh, <laughs> that didn't care about cinema releases or because uh, yeah that, I've been like, watching the studio those, slasher films yeah those shots played out and they are gratuitous uh, but it's sure. not asking you to uh, think too much about that <laughs> maybe well in, in this in Slumber Party yeah yeah uh, maybe but, but I may have just overthought it oh uh, no I mean I think there's a like when you hear about the production of this film and what it was mm. intended to be, there is a a bit of that not discomfort but curiosity about what is this film trying to be? Who is it for? Yes, uh, that's tricky, and it and it really but, does kind of leave a big question mark over this film. Uh, it does, which I feel disquieting. It is- it's written as a parody and you can still see it. You can still see how this is a parody. Like early on, the first kill with the ele- with the electrician was like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> like it's going to be so blunt that yes. that's going to be part of the humor of it. And there are certain moments in here which I think still work as like parody of the slasher movie genre, which is super early to be doing that. Mm. Because although slasher movies, you know, have their roots in the 70s, it really is 1980, Friday the 13th, that kickstarts the sudden wash of them and 1981 and 2 in particular where you see most of them like the my bloody valentines and prom night and terror train and you know all of these movies come out in the early 80s and here we are in 1982 you know with a script that must have been written significantly earlier than that or at least kind of earlier than Mm. that 
yeah, and we and we have a parody, and it kind of works in places. But then we have these rewrites by faceless producers to make it play as a relatively straight um, slasher movie. But there's almost a charm to that as well because of what producers consider to be a straight slasher movie in 1982. <laughs> so yes. it kind of plays in a way you can laugh at those elements. So yeah. even some it's of the a very most, interesting film. Even some of the most egregious dialogue. It's like I can't yeah. tell if this was written if this part <laughs> was written by a woman parodying what <laughs> men would write as a slasher movie, or if this was something added in by a man trying to write a yeah. slasher movie. Like Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's we, indistinguishable. Yeah, we have a we have a line from the, the again, the shower room scene where someone just says, Oh, I think your tits are getting bigger and everyone replies, Mine <laughs> and then just Yeah, like, that giggles, is which is kind of fucking hilarious. You know, I think your tits are getting bigger. Mine? <laughs> It's great. There's actually uh, we'll get to quick firing in a moment, Mine? so we can talk more about these moments. Because yeah, that's great. <laughs> every girl. <laughs> because there's so many moments like that. It's quite cute in places. Mm. So I'm quite happy with it. It's not. It's a bit messy. Yes. It's not. It doesn't feel like a pure holistic vision, um, which is a shame. But I am glad it found a cult following, um, and that the it is being appreciated for what it is. Because I can imagine it would play out really well to a crowd. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of fun, uh, I think, watching yeah. it as a group. I think I had less yeah. fun watching it solo. Um, yeah. Just as, and, and as well, we've got we got way too many characters, all with a very similar <laughs> style. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, because in, like, what, what's the Friday the 13th that just has way too many people? It's the sixth one, I think, where they oh. just keep introducing people. But they're all so weird. That's yeah. why it's such a delight, our Hall- like doing the Halloween episodes, coming up with nicknames for everyone. Because like one guy's just going to look like Kevin Bacon. Well, one guy is Kevin Bacon. <laughs> but one guy's going to just... And he they're just going to look like... like... There's just going to be a David Byrne, you know? Yeah, there's yeah. going to be like weirdos, just show... like the weirdos like David Byrne are just going to show up. Yes. And you'll be able to name them. Whereas in this, yeah, it is six or so very similar looking... And blonde not, white women and not everyone's given a chance to like have those no distinct personalities pop right like well you know, le- let me ask you this yeah who was the girl who was being mean about new girl in the locker room which one what would became of her oh, i genuinely don't know that is that the one who's killed straight away that wasn't linda was it it might have been the, the is that one the one who with got, the yeah. boyfriend no 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 right. linda's the one Could've... i think who oh. dies straight away right immediately yeah. just uh in the shower room maybe yeah. Could be, but I've got no. I genuinely idea. don't know. Yeah. No, <laughs> and no. that is an issue. <laughs> Wish it's... I could tell you. Yeah, and a lot of their dialogue, like apart from little bits, is like yeah. it, it has a similar voice. So then, yeah. um, shared amongst various actors, you're like, oh my god, because you're all speaking with the same, somewhat yeah. sassy, somewhat funny. Um, you know, somewhat clever dialogue. I don't know who the fuck is speaking right now. None of you, you know, there's yeah. n- there's no, <laughs> th- but like, you know, we talk about like bitch girl, but like there is no bitch girl. It would be, yeah. it would be easier if, if one person was just like mean, you know, or like was yeah, that exactly. archetype, but there's, there's less archetypes in this film, yeah. which, which is kind of nice because it means they're more natural, but it does just mean you have to just, I guess, kind of be willing to not know who they are yes just take them as they come because (laughs) in the end this isn't focused on them as the character like it's we're gonna follow this slasher genre to the t it's gonna rock it along yeah we don't have a lot of time to see you know none of these characters change whereas these kind of the way they're they're somewhat written it it's like i would have liked to see more of their relationship i i yeah. I would have rather yeah. maybe we not started with like murder right off the bat and know that the killer's out. I would have kind yeah. of just liked to be at the slumber party seeing well, I mean, you know, the back and forth and the relationships and the conflicts yeah. and then we add in this kind of murder thing and you're like, yeah. "Whoa." Well, that's that's how slashes tend to work and there's, you know, there's no reason that this is an hour and 20 minutes long. Put another <laughs> 10, 20 minutes in uh, of building up the dynamic. I'm a cigarette. <laughs> I want to finish the film. Done. It Boom. is. Get it in the can. It's got to be done. It's got to be, be done. be done, not good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get done with our episode as well. Let's uh let's start quick firing Woo. some of the things we liked. <laughs> quick fire. Oh, can I start with something that happens in like the very first like opening minute or two? Absolutely. Which is she's got the 
the radio is on and there's some guy who, and she, like it starts with a scream and a woman has just won a competition oh, and yes. the radio host is like <laughs> hey take it easy what did i win the stolen ticket hundred dollars you won you're ready for this your own kded t-shirt oh, oh. yeah she and sounds so disappointed it's very <laughs> it's... funny it's but it's so world weary as well. It's uh, not like a oh, like young youthful disappointment. It's just sort of oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's shit like everything else in life. Yeah, I don't know what they advertised <laughs> as the prize for this radio <laughs> thing, but um, no, and it's definitely, definitely a fucking um, uh, that 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 was on my list. Um, <laughs> I've just got were boobs different in the seventies. Boobs have been very different in a lot I don't of know. time. That's just a little thing I wrote in my phone notes app. Uh, I guess yeah. the boobs look kind of interesting. They're, uh, they're perky. The, yeah. <laughs> what can I say? Has bra technology changed things? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I, I but I'm going to f- find out. <laughs> I definitely feel myself going, huh, there's some nice tits. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's some very nice boobs in this movie. Yeah. We can all <laughs> agree on that. The appropriateness of them being there we can debate about, but we can't debate. But there's some nice boobs. There were <laughs> nice boobs. Anyway. <laughs> I guess that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I like the open. I like the synth music quite a lot, and in particular, there's like a main mo- motif that's something like, and it's like, I don't know. I quite like it. It trans. It gets me there. It gets me where I needs to be, which yeah. is 1982. Um, the the whole like or shucksness or I don't know the the <laughs> two guys uh, as the Sparky gets killed. It, it's oh, yeah. it's that thing that makes you question this movie, right? Is it a parody? Is it not? Yeah. Is it serious? It's yeah, just the exactly. way they kind of like oh, shucks and like flirting with this Sparky. I've got a, uh, I've got this ringing in my ear and and none in my phone. Uh, silly, <laughs> silly little. <laughs> yeah, line. that's that's cute, and it's also just cute that there is a sexy lady Sparky just there. Yeah. Just like it feels, it feels so like Howard Hawks, like every woman is a beautiful dame yeah. kind of situation. <laughs> it's just yeah. Yeah, it feels very cheesy. Yeah, and um, it's and just then, like, and then yeah, her mm. getting murdered in the van. Um, yeah, that's horrible. Actually, as they just kind of like walk away, smiling, like, oh, yeah, oh, we just because you can imagine that being like a naked gun joke. Like she's in the window, like screaming, and they're just completely oblivious. It's Men in Black, you know, with Will Smith like getting thrown about in the yeah. background. Like <laughs> the joke is there, but it's also kind of horrible yes. as well. Like it's horrific the idea she wouldn't be seen, and then later on as they're leaving the school, her body's just in a fucking dumpster. And yeah. they just walk right past it. And if it hadn't zoomed in, that would have been a really creepy detail. Mm. If it was just like panned with them and then you go past and if you're paying attention, you see her body in the dumpster in the corner of frame. Yeah. Like, yeesh. Unfortunately, this isn't a film for subtlety. So <laughs> <laughs> moving like, I, I don't know. I liked the cheesiness of it. I think if it if it had kept that tone yeah. mostly throughout, then I think I would have been, I don't know, closer to... Uh, 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 this film lacks an overall kind of cohesion and, um, you know, yeah. I liked the cheesy tone of that. So, yeah. That's fair. Good stuff. Speaking of, like, uh, another moment that feels like parody is that she's outside. She's, what's she doing? She's doing something outside. She's trying to get something to work. And it's like a bug or something near snail. her. Snail. And suddenly there's a snail. That's it. There's a snail. And fucking Ted, <laughs> the creepy neighbor, jumps in from out of nowhere and hits it with like a meat what does he cleaver. hit it with? Like, <laughs> with a, a meat, cleaver. meat cleaver. He just and then... leaves this snail in twain. <laughs> <laughs> and then, having jumped out of the darkness of a meat cleaver, just turns to him and says, "Oh, I hope I didn't scare you." Like you fucking <laughs> maniac. That's a parody moment. Yeah. <gasps> Hi, Mr. Carter. Hi, Diane. I hope I didn't startle you. That's making fun of the stupid jump scares in horror movies. Yeah, it's it's got a few of that. It's the lady, it's the uh, the tradie with the drill. <laughs> Your yeah. neighbour just macheteing. No, sorry, like meat cleaver in snails. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're right. When the tradie inside the house just drills through, when the drill comes through the door and you think, oh, is she going to die now? And it's just like, hey, sorry, just need, thought you needed a hole in your door. Oops. Like, that's <laughs> sorry, such I a lame excuse. Sorry, I you. That's such a lame excuse. That is like that is again a parody moment. So yes. you can see it. You can see it in there. Yeah, yeah. Ugh, it would have been better through. like with more gags like that. I think. Yeah, more jokes, more silliness. Uh, oh shit! It's me. Sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I I really liked that. There's some moments of genre savviness, like that. Yeah. These women aren't stupid, um, mm. and that 
you know, the the initial plan of our main girl, once they discover that the pizza guy's been murdered, okay, we're all going to stay together. Uh, yeah. Everyone grabs, like, everyone kind of grabs knives or whatever out of the, the um, you know, the knife block kind of thing. Mm. Uh, and they're just like, we're just going to wait it out. Like, that's, that's, yeah. that's what we'll yeah. do. And it's like, that's Form really, a circle. Yeah, that's really interesting. It's It's nice to see people failing not because they're incompetent but because they're just put in a bad situation Um, yeah exactly with idiot men who decide that they're gonna risk oh god the stupidest plan ever (laughs) stupid i love that and also just the seriousness of like really did not think through this plan but also like they're so committed anyway of like one of them goes yeah you know one of us will probably not make it but the other one will you're willing to die for this (laughs) <laughs> You're willing to literally give your life for this. What are you doing? Just get in the circle. Really bad. Really. Yeah. And it's do like, what we the gotta, girls say. Yeah. It's right. We got to do something. You know, we got to we got to do something for the girls. And it's like, yeah, wouldn't a better test of that be sticking close to the girls and protecting them that way? I know. And I love that they just don't give a shit. Like none of them try and talk them out of it. They're just like, sure. OK, we'll get the door behind you. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I do love the moment though, where the the boys have committed to this plan, and one of them is getting kissed on the cheek by all of the girls. <laughs> it's oh really, yeah, it's somewhat really sweet. I don't know. His expression of it is just very sweet. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, before oh god. He dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I do love the gag of her going to kiss Biff on the cheek, and the head just drops off. Oh, like it's yeah. kind of cliche, but like. I liked it was well done. I I did I do we see Biff get got get got? No. Get got. No, because she No we don't they're, so they're making out, surprise. Uh and she's like, I can't leave this party, like, you know, yeah. we've got to do it for Which the he girls. takes really well, by the way. He could have been like just a shitty kind of boyfriend of just oh, what are you doing? I wanna yeah. get laid. But he's just like, Oh, okay, I'll I'll pull up in here. Well he's wait. like he's like, uh the friend will understand. Um and then she's like, No, no and he's like, Well, why don't we just go to my place then? You know, if mm. you don't want to mess around here, like with yeah. your friends walking through. Yeah, it's it's pretty reasonable. <laughs> don't I, mind I like me. it a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, the boys are stupid, but they're uh, not necessarily too shitty, except not, for them peeping on the girls changing that Oh, my God. But that was, the, that was the 80s. Nobody knew that was a problem until like 2016. <laughs> <laughs> sure (laughs) (laughs) and we couldn't have guessed that women wouldn't have liked that we couldn't have guessed what women wanted how would we have known (laughs) there was no way of finding out (laughs) (laughs) women didn't learn how to communicate until (laughs) the late 90s oh god (laughs) and now they won't shut up (laughs) am i right fellas (laughs) Uh, fellas paul's head drops off (laughs) oh no he got cut Speaking of getting got, yeah. <laughs> really good special effect on either Paul Reiser or Michael Keaton, I can't remember which it is, goes into the garden and the bo- uh, the garage and the body swings down of one of the girls. Oh, yeah. And then suddenly he just gets a drill for his shoulder. It's yeah. really grisly. That was like one of the, because usually we don't see the drill actually no. entering into the body. We get a cutaway and... Um... Or he swings it. He cuts with his drill. Yeah, he slices, <laughs> which shouldn't. Whatever. I shouldn't work. I'm not an expert in drills, but mm, <laughs> anyway. Um <laughs> Whatever, moving along. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a tradie or a or a sparky or, or a chippy. Or sparky, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. But I'm willing to guess that that's wrong. Um oh I just have the moment here of just putting the pizza on top of the body because it is superb. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's a that's a five star moment. <laughs> <laughs> Defining Every, but also, this movie. Uh, uh, she's going for it in a very comedic way. But the other two yeah. girls are playing it dead straight, where they're totally yeah. horrified by her actions, revulsed, <laughs> yeah. like probably up chucking <laughs> a little bit. And she's just like, "What? I, f- feel, I feel, better feel better when I'm. I feel. I feel better when I'm. I. I've eaten, <laughs> and I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel better now. I do feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't fault it. Um. Uh. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Look, as as annoyed as I, as I am by everyone, like, not having a super distinct style. Oh, you know, we've just got uh, a yeah. very similar kind of, like, body shape and, and height of all these oh, yeah. women. Only one woman of color. Um, but yep. 
they're, I don't know, something very charming about a lot of these films is that uh, looking back on them, there is just a there is a just a more naturalistic standard of beauty in terms of like face. Yes. Um, yeah. There's less emphasis on a lot of the face shapes looking the same, um, mm. and just like a lot of real looking people. Apart from again, everyone is very, uh, very thin and very conventionally attractive that way. But like, sure, yeah, I but don't I know. get what you mean. Very they look more natural. Faces. And I, yeah, I find that with most like eighties horror movies is that people do just look more like people. Yeah, which I think yeah. is good. <laughs> It's good for people yes, to look like people. Underrated. Right? <laughs> we can't all be Chris Evans and we shouldn't. <laughs> we shouldn't be. <laughs> Otherwise it, if everybody is Chris Evans, then no one is. <laughs> and that's horrifying. <laughs> that is horrifying. They should do a being we John Malkovich, but with Chris Evans <laughs> being Chris Evans. Oh my god. I couldn't handle it. It's literally just people fighting to get in through that little door. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> the John Malkovich door is just like open. <laughs> <laughs> weird, uh, weird that no one wants to take this one. But uh. <laughs> John Malkovich is also trying to climb, climb into the Chris Evans door. Why wouldn't it's you? It's a hell of a anyway. situation. <laughs> why? Literally, why would you not? Um, okay, right. When they've barricaded the door, and yes. the killer just like creepily comes in through the window behind them, and at least for the first few moments of him doing it, there's no score to accompany it. Yeah, he's and relatively he's just quiet coming in through the window. Well. He's relatively quiet, and there's nothing going on. It's really quite creepy and unsettling. And then he gets very close to them, and you do think, okay, could you not <laughs> hear or feel or just have that sense when somebody else is in the room that nah. people have? No, nope. nah. that was a late invention. <laughs> yeah, that that oh, that 90s. was like a genuinely kind of ooh, yeah, ooh, that's a bit creepy. Ooh, oh. Yeah. Oh, God. Please notice him. Both. I don't want either of you to die. I was sad when Bridget Fonda died. I don't know why. I just... Like, in spite of, like, not being able to remember any of her moments, I was like... But I think it was just because it came down to two of them. And now that was all each other had. Yeah. And I was like, okay, and now also, I want these ladies she, to succeed. He gets her with the knife that she dropped, I think. Oh, and God. And it goes, like... It goes in and you can see, like, yes. a little twisting action. And you're like, oh. And she was nearly out the door. Yeah. And also the fact uh, that her friend just scarpered. I mean, fair enough, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, she's not, not dead at the point when the friend just l- runs away. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I don't yeah. know what I'd do, Oof. but, you know. Oof. 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 <laughs> I don't know what I'd do, but I mean, I'm going to stand by this door. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Um, I liked how wild the kind of end fight was, like, all of the girls waiting oh, yeah. on the sky. And it's, like, clear that, you know, uh, or even... even um, new girl kind of uh, sizing him up with the machete, you can tell that she's yeah. kind of, like, fearful because, like, she doesn't want to get close enough, like, getting close enough to swing at him with the machete also means that yeah. she's going to give him leverage to get the drill closer to her. You know what I mean? So oh, it's just like yes. yeah. there is a bit of tension there. And then once he comes back, they're all just, like, trying to get one good, like, you know, yeah. um, wail on him before he, he kills another. Yeah. And it's pretty... Well, I feel like they probably just all tackled each other. Like, it looks very realistic. <laughs> <laughs> it does. And the movie has established that he can kill you really quick. Like, yeah. in one just quick thing of his, like, drill or whatever, he can just get you dead. So you get very anxious. You don't want to see more people die. And that's, like, how you should be feeling in a slasher movie. Yes. It's like, for God's sake, kill him. Yeah. <laughs> Take him out! Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Finish him off. Yeah. <laughs> just leave him on the floor, drop your murder weapon and run like every other hero does yeah. in these situations. <laughs> um, this is such a little one. Um, but it's the sister. She's playing dead in order to scare her sister. And I can't remember it offhand, but she makes a noise when she reanimates to scare her sister. And I enjoyed the noise. Oh, yeah. It's a bit so daggy, will... isn't it? It's like, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, rawr, rawr, like a dream, or Jim so... <laughs> Yeah. So I shall sample that here. Courtney? Courtney, what happened? What's wrong? And speaking of great noises, I just also want to include. Oh, it's fuck. It's the funniest part of the film. It's um, it's the bit that is very overtly a parody moment. Is where the sister goes to the fridge to get a beer, and she opens it without looking, and there's a dead body in it. And as she opens the door, the head slides with the door and makes a squeaking sound <laughs> as it goes. And then she goes to close it, and the head is pushed back and squeaks back yeah. in. 
and then she opens it again and it happens again and she closes it again yeah. and then she finds the it's box. a great it's rule great. of three that moment well i think we ought to get something out of this let's read the fridge come on i want to get out of here i don't know what it is but something about this house gives me the creeps spoil sport i never have any fun just one little beer Courtney, you're underage negative but come on let's go it's a funny moment. Uh, yeah, we have our it's a comedy three. beat. Yeah, it should have been more of that. Uh, yeah, more of that would have been amazing. But yeah, I really enjoyed that moment. It made me laugh. Yeah, I think mm. uh, I don't know. I think that's all. I, I, I okay. Know. It's got like a lot of little good moments in in this thing, but just cohesively, yes. it's like, what are you? It's a bit messy, what but hey, you? it's not going to be messy for very long. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> My, <laughs> It's bad. You don't have to spend that a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's the burned black thing, isn't it? It's dreadful, but it's quite short. Oh, God, I love that quote so much. <laughs> My last one is just when someone gets their hand cut off. Is it the killer gets his hand cut off? Yeah. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. It looks very good. Yes, he does, yeah. Um, yeah, good splatter, good screaming. It's, yeah. And it's our second hand getting cut off consecutively as well here on OGT Mansion. So. Yay! Yay! <laughs> lot. I thought you did the Star the- Wars, though. There's a lot of hands being lopped off there. <laughs> That's a lot of hands. I'll put, look, I'm putting a playlist together. Okay, great. <laughs> and uh, we can all enjoy that. Okay. Oh, God. It's time for me to check in with the one the one good team. I saw that Jen was doing the Lord's work over on uh, Facebook. Over yes. in the metaverse. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Even uh, though let's I don't think with... you'd necessarily uh, posted a call out. <laughs> I did, but the upload failed. Uh, it's not my fault this time. This time. You can blame okay. Paul Salt, though, for previous... <laughs> Okay, we have got Philip Babcock in, I believe, his first comment. Hello. Uh, He says, pizza is always delicious. (laughs) True. (laughs) Very true. True. Absolutely it is. Hey, that was her last meal too, so who could begrudge Oh my God. Hey, she got a good last meal. Bridget Fonda did not. Oh, (laughs) we don't know what she had for lunch, but she did not get to. Uh, She had some of the, she had weed, so that's fine. (laughs) You know what? Pizza girl was hanging off the cliff. She had the tiger above her and the tiger below her. (laughs) And she was willing to take the moment to enjoy the pizza that was on the cliff side with her. You know what I mean? I've not it's heard of zen. this uh, metaphor. It's just like the two <laughs> wolves not. inside you. No, this there is a are guy. Two wolves He's a inside monk. You. One of them wants pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's a monk. He, he jumps off a cliff to get away from a tiger and he gets caught in a tree. And then there's another tiger below and he doesn't know what to do. But then there's he discovers there's like uh, fruit growing on the tree branch he's clung onto, and he he takes a bite and it's the sweetest he's ever eaten, <laughs> and that's the end. The whole point is save her life whilst you know even in the worst situations life will give you something nice. How the fuck and is this tiger below? Pizza. Oh, okay, it's not like water. Got it. <laughs> it's just a cliff. <laughs> oh yeah, <Cliffs laughs> he's swimming. Be... <laughs> he's swimming down there. Like... <laughs> Cliffs can be over <laughs> land too. Never mind. Cliffs can be over whatever you like, Australia, and that's <laughs> the dream that is being built right now. By your new government. Thanks, Albo. <laughs> new, cli- new cliffs. Every town will get its own cliff. <laughs> BT Calloway also writes. Yay! For what started life as a parody of the genre, this movie became a prime example of the guilty pleasure sh- uh, sh- schlock slasher. That was tricky. <laughs> Sh- <laughs> Shirley, <laughs> Shirley selected a schlock slasher. And right. It's been a while, but I can remember the locker room cat and mouse se- scene being genuinely tense hmm. that scene like that's very early on and yes i i've read elsewhere people say that describe that as very tense as well um i didn't quite get that from it uh but yes i could see how it was well handled i didn't but i was in the bath so i was i was loosey-goosey you know i was pretty relaxed <laughs> no My tension God, from this guy <laughs> <laughs> hold on there's a lot of activity going on here here we go paranormal activity so oh. yes jennifer sones very good very graciously when our upload failed i did try uh says hey there pauls i did not see a post on meta so i wanted to send my thoughts this way valerie and her sister seem cool yes they do that's new girl and her sister yeah uh they are having a fun night with horror movies and also get to be badass and save trish uh this movie also supposedly spawned many zany sequels what's not to like yes you mentioned you've seen some Oh, yeah. Sadly, I haven't seen the immediate sequel, which just looks a lot cheesier and a lot, like, sillier because it's, <clears throat> you know, where this one is very 70s. The The next yeah. one is so 80s that the killer, his wow. drill is an electric guitar. And oh, my god! And it's, like, at the beach. <laughs> I remember when we watched this at Shite Night, 
someone put on the trailer. It's either it was on the DVD or someone just right. put it on YouTube, like played the trailer for Slumber Party Massacre 2. And we were like, holy shit. That looks so <laughs> much fucking fun. That looks so cheesy. Um, and yeah. really embracing like the comedy side of that uh, sounds amazing. This, but I think I've seen Sorority Girls s- Massacre. Uh, there's like a oh few... yes, that changed name halfway through. Yeah, there's a few. I thought I'd maybe seen Sorority Girl Mas- uh, Sorority House Massacre without knowing, but then there was also a movie that was something like Murder on Sorority Lane or something, which I've seen. So I might have um, yeah. mixed that up. I I feel like the other one, like uh, the sequels I've seen to this, I didn't really remember. <laughs> I, re- I remembered this one, yeah. Um, yeah. and I think, yeah, you can put me down for sorority party massacre. I feel like I've definitely seen that one, but the others are a <laughs> bit of a wash. But I, I do Fair still enough. really want to watch number two because that just looks, yeah, fucking. Wild. We'll do this again. We'll do that in the next run of episodes. We'll do this. Oh, and I've also seen cheerleader <laughs> massacre. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, this thing had legs. All right, a few more teams <laughs> to get through. So did the ladies. One of my old um, trainees, <laughs> an older lady who attended my disability rights training course and then added me on Facebook, liked um, Jennifer's post. <laughs> so that's fun. Great. That's a fun little glimpse into <laughs> what I'm like away from the training course. Mark Reed on Patreon said, I reckon if you asked an AI to write a horror film, it had come up with Slumber Party Massacre. All the elements are there, but it never manages to really be anything good. That said, in the spirit of your podcast, here are some things that are good. Guy one, let's go scare the girls. Guy two, but we're not invited. (laughs) It's it's good. (laughs) It's a good interaction. (laughs) Locker room scene chase had some tension. There you go. Pizza guy with no eyes. It's good stuff. Pretty good. Um, very very overt special effect where they've just put on like two mounds of flesh around the eyes, but yeah. you, you gotta love that. <laughs> if it's good enough for Hitchcock, it's good enough for us. Uh, the bit where the killer is interesting for about thirty seconds. So imagine that's when he's like doing his weird sort of "I love you so oh, much." Oh yeah, it takes, it takes so much love it to. It takes yeah. a lot of love to do this. Yeah. Yeah. You are pretty. All of you are very pretty. <laughs> Please don't do this. I love you. Please, I didn't hurt you. It takes a lot of love for a person to do this. Thunderstorms with no sign of rain. Hey, it's the desert, I imagine. I don't know, I don't know where this is. <laughs> we don't know where LA is. I don't know anything about anything. <laughs> and finally, making an obvious 25-year-old year twenty-five year old eat lollipop definitely makes them seem younger. <laughs> that'll do it. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Nailed it. Ain't I, ain't I a stinker? <laughs> Oh, that little Timmy. A uh, c- couple more. Jesus, this actually got interaction. Chris Attaway. Haven't seen it, but the poster is pretty great. The poster is pretty great, it's actually. I'm glad good, that Chris Attaway's yeah. written in. It's really good. It's just that's prime like wall territory there. Yeah. You want you want that in your place. It's very cheesy and silly and looks like a parody. It looks so over the top. It's, yeah. yeah. Cheerleader Massacre rips it off like right to the T of we've got three girls uh, like through the view of it, of legs and um it's right to the TNA yeah nice <laughs> <laughs> pat yourself and pat. finally um L. Scott Jose gets in touch saying I genuinely think this one is a bit of a masterpiece written by the legend fucking Rita May, May Brown a feminist parody of slasher films that also focus uh, functions is a pretty good one as well I love it. That that pizza scene makes a good double feature with Driller Killer. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, my mother, actually, my dear old mum, said, wasn't there a movie called Driller Killer? And I was Amazing. like, yes, there was, mum. <laughs> Your mum is hilarious. <laughs> when is she going to be Absolutely. on the pod? <laughs> <laughs> and can I, I be on, on the pod? Too. <laughs> yes. <Yay. laughs> when we do Slumber Party Massacre 2, I shall get mum on the pod. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> But then we need your mum on the pod for some of the stuff that she likes. I have been jonesing <laughs> to get my mum on the pod for a long, long time. <laughs> pod. So, please, people, pod. you have the power. Uh, vote in the comments. <laughs> vote. <laughs> it's pressure. Ellen's mum. <laughs> Let's start a campaign. Great. Thank you, OG team, for responding in such surprisingly large numbers. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Jelly Sons, for doing some of our admin. Um, <laughs> You'll receive your uh, you. fee in the in the post. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the one better thing. 
the one better thing. The one better um, thing. Do you have one? <laughs> um, <laughs> look, I. While it's like it's a competent little slasher, it's it's just a shame mm. that the production is, I think, far more interesting than than the actual kind of film. Um, mm. uh, and and what it does as a slasher is like not not more accomplished than something like Black Christmas, which kind of kicks off a lot of uh, a lot of interesting yeah. things about the genre. Um, Black Christmas has like these uh, more nuanced female characters um but it's it, it's not tongue-in-cheek at all it's played completely straight it sticks to yeah. a genre um i've rewatched it since and i i i think it really does hold up um as well as um i mean halloween is great uh also yeah. written by oh, a woman um ah yeah deborah hill was it yes yeah uh, yeah and so i think as well it, it doesn't have that kind of cruelty that uh that no, some and some slashes written by men do where you're like what the fuck like not not just <laughs> cruelty in terms of like the murder it's it's cruelty in just the way these characters yeah, are yeah mean spirited characters that they don't even no, get the characters to be are good. people yeah yeah and halloween they're good they're good friends yeah and, like, absolutely. you buy into them yeah, yeah. Lindsay, <laughs> <laughs> even when they're being shits they're being shits in the way that teenagers are yeah. um, the kids are yeah Kids are kids are shits, and that's the main takeaway from this. Now, look, there's better options to select from now because it is a slightly better world for female directors. Well, We're still not fucking there yet. <laughs> and, oof, At it's, least it's I've heard of it. Better than 1980, I think it's safe to say, when Roger Corman was the champion of equality. Oh my god. <laughs> we're, <laughs> We're doing better now. Um, but, like, I want to explore more. Because if you search for the best slasher movies directed by women, you get results for best horror movies directed by women, and most of the results are from the last 10 years. Mm. If you type best exploitation films directed by women, best so bad they're good movies directed by women, you get the same lists. Yeah. exact same ones. It just redirects you back to them. But I refuse to believe they're not out there, and I want to make it a bit of a calling to go and find these little gruey bits because we want to celebrate like you know daughters of the dust by julie dash but no where's the female directed things you yes. know where's, <laughs> where are those movies they're, I, they've got to be out there there's so little barrier to entry yeah. on some of this schlock it's got to be there and i'm gonna <laughs> dig i'm gonna dig my way through film canisters to find these movies amazing um that's your calling but, mate I know. So I hope I will have better one, better things soon. But for now, let's talk about a recent movie. I don't think we've talked about it. If we have on the podcast and not enough, uh, Censor by uh, <gasps> Prano Bailey so Bond. Good. Yeah. So really good. So really great. Really good movie. This is a woman who works for the BBFC, the BB fucking C. Um, <laughs> it's <a> BBC. <laughs> BBC, bitch. <laughs> um, as, um, oh, as David Attenborough sometimes says. Um, no, this is the different. This is not uh, related to the big broadcasting castle. Uh, this is instead the British Board of Film Censorship, uh, which was, yeah, a censorship board in the UK, especially during the video nasty era, uh, where it was believed that all of the societal issues that strangely seemed to kick off during the 80s. I wonder what was so weird about the 80s. The uh, horror, horror. I'm sure it was all the horror films. It must have been. Yeah, it absolutely must yeah, have been, said yeah. the Conservative have been government. Recession, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Margaret Thatcher. Nope, absolutely. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Union and it's blah, definitely blah, the videotapes. <laughs> and so our main character, whose name Enid, I think, she's played by, oh, she's really good, but it's Neve Algar. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's great in the role. And she's, yeah, a censor who has to cut, watch all of these horrible movies and sort of, yeah, take out the, um, the or just rate it, just describe it for the censors. Um, and slowly, maybe it's affecting her, or maybe it's actually just that she might be a bit more fucked up than than uh, she realised at first. And so you've got this thing that maybe the censor is actually bringing a lot of their own darkness to all of this, which is really interesting. It's an excellent movie, really well directed, really trippy, works great as a double feature with uh, Peter Strickland's Barbarian Sound Studio in terms yeah. of just... <laughs> guys trying to make people trying to work with movies and having it slowly melt their brains so yeah <laughs> yeah i would also say go see barbarian if you want oh god you know how we were talking about like we're <laughs> craving like cheese or just like yeah you know barbarian was like one of the oh. films i saw in cinema where and i'm pretty i would say i'm pretty versed in horror movies um yeah. i honestly 
had no idea what to fucking expect from one moment yeah. to the next. <laughs> Every turn was a delight. I was yeah. laughing. I was horrified. The tension works so well. It really does. It's got good scares, yeah. but it's also so funny in little parts. Um, yeah. Yeah. Go see Barbarian. Barbarian's very good, and I think it's now on like Disney Plus. It or is, which so. is so funny. <laughs> which is insane. <laughs> But my God, if you do have any means of watching it in a cinema, then I highly recommend doing oh, God, so because so good. it played great to a crowd. <laughs> that the, the, the shift halfway through yep. was like, you, I've never heard an audience audibly go, what the fuck before, <laughs> just sort of, the sort of, huh, sound I, I, that came off of everyone was amazing. I definitely said, what the fuck to my friend <laughs> next to me. <laughs> ah, that was one better thing. The one better thing. Uh, Ellen, in two minutes, can you tell us absolutely um, all about your stuff that we can link to? Yeah, go follow me and the podcast that I do at Roll to Cast, R-O-L-E. We're a variety TTRPG podcast, so each season is a different game system. There's something for everyone. We're currently doing Starfinder. It's really, really fun. Um, so follow Roll to Cast <laughs> on all of the socials and go listen to the podcast and uh, give us five stars, please. Uh, as well, uh, you can find me playing Cyberpunk Red on Sirenscape on yes. Twitch every Every Friday, um, and it's super fun. We're like eleven seasons in; it's crazy. Um, oh! And also, if you are down in uh, Ghana country in Adelaide for the 2023 Adelaide Fringe, uh, not only will Rollcast be having four live shows, I will also wow. be having a show called Be a Doll, Won't You, um, which is all about <laughs> the objectification of female bodies, which is pretty fitting for this podcast. <laughs> well, hey, uh, or pretty fitting for this episode in particular. Um, yes, and for this podcast. Yeah, yeah we, do, we do it a lot. To be fair. <laughs> So yeah, um, um, please uh, check that out and say say good day. And that's me. Boom, bingo. Yeah, say good day. Say good day. Excellent. OGT Pod. Do that. You'll get it. Great. You're listening to it now. You found it. Well done. Yeah. Stay. Patreon though. Lots of good stuff on Patreon. Ellen's gonna be there soon. <laughs> good stuff. I'm Paul soon. And I'm Blair. Oh, I died. <laughs> I got slashed. Wait, you're Blair. <laughs> well, who, the, who the hell am I? <laughs> 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 Bye. <laughs> so oh, oh uh, the good thing about some of the party massacre was uh, the bit where uh, the lady eats pizza off of a dead body. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>